like the Jews or Semites. So it's divide and conquer. So we have no power in that. But when we get back to race, because when you remember in the 60s, the black power movement, you know, blacks were, you know, we were on our way until we got railroaded in the Civil Rights Acts. Because when Linda B. Johnson signed those Civil Rights Acts, which was exactly 55 years ago this year, keep that number in your mind. Keep that number in your mind. 55. 55 years ago, Linda B. Johnson signed the Civil Rights Acts July 2nd, 1964 to be exact. Now, the black race was being led by Dr. King and the Civil Rights Movement. They saw this as a victory for the black race. They saw this. Dr. King and the Civil Rights leaders were invited to Washington and Lyndon B. Johnson signed the Civil Rights Acts. And Dr. King and the Civil Rights Movement thought that this was the, the, the end all in for the black race. OK, but it turned out to be a checkmate by Lyndon B. Johnson and J. Edgar Hoover. Now, included in the 1964 Civil Rights Acts, desegregation, okay? That, those were the Democratic Southern states that were segregated. And I said the Democratic Southern states that were segregated. Discrimination, to name, you know, discrimination and equality for the black race, but it actually included white women and white men. And when I say this, because it started the matriarch era, and keep that number 55 in your mind, it started the matriarch era, okay, because the women li the women's lives movement, you know, was included in those civil rights acts, as well as the LBGTQ community, more importantly, the gay community, which were spearheaded by white men. So now we went from a race to in ethnicity as African-Americans, and we were put in the same pot with white women, the feminist movement, and gay white men, the... You see where I'm going with this? So how can you put us in a pot with white women and white men and we have a voice? 